All right guys, welcome back to another Good Good Labs video. We are out here today at Blue Jack National and we're over here at the par three course. It's 10 holes and Gary and I are gonna go through and hit wedge shots. We are gonna explain to you guys exactly what goes through our mind when we have a certain distance with a wedge in our hand. First hole is actually uh, my favorite yardage, 69 yards. Yeah, I mean, the pin's kind of in the back right over here. There's not a ton of green to work with, so you're gonna wanna try and nip this one. For 69 yards, what are you trying, like, how do you gauge that distance? Are you a field player, or do you have, like, a certain- I'm, I'm all field. There's right. certain guys that have, like, a clock system, basically. Right. And they say, here's my nine o'clock swing, and they take it to a certain point in the clock that they kind of just, like, that's a good trigger for their mind. For me, personally, it's all a feel thing. I'm just a field golfer, so I don't think about how far my back swing is going back. Maybe you're a little more technical. I just like the main thing no matter what no matter how far your backswing is going back make sure you're always accelerating through the ball on wedge shot there are so many guys that have a shorter wedge shot they'll take it all the way back here and then they'll decelerate that's so inconsistent so instead right. take a shorter backswing accelerate through the ball that's how you get a little more spin as well I'm gonna work on more of a clock system. So I know 70 yards, I'm gonna dial that back. I'm, I wanna carry this about 65. So I'm gonna take it about three quarters back and accelerate. I kind of try and feel how long I'm taking it back. Yeah, but guys, this, I'm telling you, this 50 to 100 yards, just from playing a lot of golf, it's the most important part, and obviously putting. This part right here, if you guys can dial that in from 50 to 100, you'll be so much better because you're going to have those yardages a lot, whether you hit a crappy second shot or whatever, you're going to have that yardage and you need to dial it in. Yeah, no, we're actually going to have a match within this kind of like wedge lesson for you guys. Grant honestly put one in there pretty tight, so I got to expect he's going to make that. Okay. Okay. 96 yards on this next hole, so almost more of a full swing. Grant has honors. We're gonna have Grant once again walk us through this swing for him, what he's thinking about. I want you to talk about how you've been working on penetrating your wedge shots, because that's a very important thing. One thing that I've been trying to do is obviously a shallow out. So when you're trying to hit your low penetrating wedge shots, you don't want to be steep like this. You want to round it off like this and rotate. If you guys are steep, it's going to ride up the face. And that's what I struggle with. 96 yards here. I got a little 56 degree. Honestly, 96 yards, probably playing 90. It's a three quarter 56. Boom. That was sick. That was nice and low, penetrating. All right, same thing. Trying to round it off, shallow it out. Oh, that one rid up the face. And that might need to fit, Grant. Oh no. My advice though, guys, if you have these yardages, 80, 90, 100, find out what a full swing is with each wedge. Whether you play a 52, 56, 60, find out what a full swing is and then gauge it from there. You guys can find this out if you go to the range or do anything like that, shoot the target and find out what a full shot is. Cause then you can gauge it from there. Honestly, I'm gonna chip this one, guys. Just off the green, I feel a little more consistent with my chipping than my putting. I just don't know how to read these greens too well. Going for the course record. Also guys, it's really awesome to showcase this par three out here at Blue Jack. And it's just, it's amazing to be able to come out here. All right, here we go, 98. Now this last hole, it was downhill. So you gotta always calculate for that too. You gotta take that all into account. This is 98, it's completely level. So it's probably close to almost a full 56. And on this one, I'm really, on all my wedges, I'm trying to Tommy Fleetwood them and hold my fall through to here. Not make that full golf swing, kind of just hold it off. I like that. Yes. Okay, the biggest, that might go in the hole. Oh, that might be it. The biggest difference I've noticed about Grant's wedges since we started working on him and trying to get him to just penetrate him a little better is his acceleration through the ball and the rounding off for sure. I just always noticed he would get here and he would get steep and it almost looked like you would decelerate, but I just love seeing what I'm seeing right now. It's, it's beautiful. That last one kind of rode up the face, so I'm just almost trying to like stay rounded as well and stay shallow and clip it. Don't hit down on it too much. Like that. Nice. Oh my God, that's long. I'm not gonna lie, that felt real nice. I've been able to play with a lot of really good wedge players, but I will say Garrett is up there with some of the best natural like wedge players. If you guys watch his technique, it's really something good to copy because he hits it. I mean, inside a hundred yards, the man hits it so close every single time. Okay, so Steven and I on Christmas day, we went out to the course, we played, we played around golf and we had something happen that has never happened. Steven and I hit two shots into a bunker and our balls were actually touching. And this is the closest we have gotten since then. Look at, look at Grant and I's balls. I spun my 
line back, and honestly, my ball probably touched his. All right, I'm giving Grant a free line here. Because, I mean, he, like you said, he was just inside of me by about an inch, so. Right to left here, guys, a little down downhill. Okay. That's good knowledge for Grant to know. That breaks a lot. Holy. <laughs> It's tough to like trust it. Guys, 77 yards. So once again, we're gonna dial it back. Now we're gonna take the 60 degree and hit my 60 degree. Now this is, I would say 77. So a full 60 degree is around 85, 90 yards. So now I'm gonna dial it back from there and kind of figure out 77 yards. Kind of an estimate. I'm also gonna take it three quarters. I lost bed. Since it's uphill, I'm actually going to open up the face a pretty decent amount, and I'm going to stay shallow, which hopefully the ball will still come out decently low. But what this is going to allow me to do is carry it up past the ridge and land it super, super soft. Maybe even spin it back, even though we only have 73 yards. Nice. How was that? And that actually spun back a lot. So for me, set up to a pretty normal, balls in the center of the stand, still aiming square. Hey, this is one key point. Garrett's hands are not like this. No. He's making sure it's straight. If my hands were there, what would happen? So I would come into the ball, and it would ride up the face, and it would, it would probably go higher, to be honest with you, but it wouldn't spin at all. The biggest part of this shot right here is landing it soft and if anything spinning it back. I'll show you my divot, but I, I can almost guarantee you I spun that last one back. So then it's basically same thing, but staying shallow and not letting those hands get too far ahead, you know what I'm saying? That one I pulled it, but lots of spin, yeah. landing soft. Now this is probably like 30 yards. I'm gonna hit a low nipper and I'm doing exactly what Garrett did. I'm making sure my hands stay even with and I use the bounce and turn shallow. I don't wanna be like this. That is not what I wanna see. I just wanna be using the bottom part of this club. You gotta move your hands back a little more to make the club slide. Oh, typically it is pretty hard to spin a ball back, especially up a hill from like 73 yards. But with opening up the face, I was able to like land that pin high and land it soft. So I was able to carry it past this ridge at the front. But it's a good shot to have in the back. Oh, he clutches up. It's par, let's go. One under to one under. Grant, that was solid up and down actually. That was not easy. All right guys, this hole is really cool. We gotta flop it up over this bunker and get it to stop. Yeah, like Grant said, this is kind of a tougher shot for me. I'm doing the same thing that I did on the last hole. It's just more exaggerated. Stance gonna be a little more wide, kind of like a bunker shot, more of a flop shot than a full swing. And I'm gonna open up the face a little bit more than I did on the last hole. And ideally, this should land and just, it should stop after about a foot. Ah. Uh, Still solid. Yeah, it feels fun. I just hit a little bit behind it. Bounce got a little bit too much engaged on this tight line. The best advice I can give anybody out there is to learn how to use the bounce. Because if you guys are digging with the leading edge of this club right here, and you guys are digging into the ground, you're gonna chunk chips all the time and skull them. But if you learn how to use this, you can slide the club and be more consistent. Oh, that's pretty thick. Yep. All right, left or right here, guys, to get it to two under. Oh my, stay on the green, man. Whoa. Oh, ho, ho. Nice Every good wedge player on tour, they're all shallow. Like, there's nobody that's steep. That's right. one thing you guys will notice. But you can't control distance when it rides up the face. All right, 90 sure. yards here. This I got a 56. I'm going to take a little more club here and just really control it. This is unreal look at that oh, i'm just holding it right to here i'm not letting it go like this i just really want to make sure i hold this angle that's a little long isn't it no. No. Okay. that is one thing i've always noticed with pro golfers is they really just know how to control their wedges they know how to control the spin they know how to penetrate them yeah see if i can get this for three under oh he's dirty good match well guys, hopefully you guys did enjoy that. I mean, just being able to, obviously, like I said, play this par three course is really cool because it's so pure and you're able to come out here and actually get better at golf. But hopefully you guys did actually learn something from that about how to dial in those yardages and picking out either a length of your backswing or the different club, changing it up and learning how to dial in those yardages. That's that's my main goal from 50 to 100 yards. Yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this, guys. And I hope you guys got some solid information on maybe how to penetrate your wedges. Obviously, wedges is just so about distance control. You know, line is one thing, but you got to learn how to just hit the right distance. 
distance almost every time. Think about it this way. If you're pin high, 10 feet right, it's better than being longer the green, you know what I'm saying, or shorter the green. So biggest thing, learn how to control the distance on your wedges, and it's nearly impossible if it's riding up the face. Anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, stay tuned for more content on the Good Good Labs channel. Until next time, guys. Peace out.